Hello, it is May 21st, 2021, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello, it's good to be back with you. This is Thoughts from the Word. Today we're going to be finishing out our week looking at uh, Samach, the next section in the uh, Psalm 119. So if you have your Bible, turn there, Psalm 119. We're going to be uh, looking at verses 113 through 120. Hear now the word of the Lord. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise that I may live And let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross. Therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear before you, and I am afraid of your judgments. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. Well, in this passage here, the psalmist is speaking back to God now about the benefits of his walking with God, that God is uh, his source of strength, but also God is his hiding place, as we see in one fourteen. God is his protection from the evildoers. Verse fifteen, depart, 115, depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments. He looks to God for strength in verse 16. Uphold me according to your promise. Do not let me be put to shame. He's our strength. He's our comfort. He's our hope. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. He's praying that God will lift him up and hold him up so that he doesn't uh, say, listen, God didn't do what he said he was going to do. I'm not going to follow him anymore. He's He sees in God strength and hope. Then he speaks about God in particular. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is in vain. For all of those who think they can do it themselves, God says, no, you can't. And the psalmist realizes that and realizes that how vain it is to think that I can be like God and I can do like God. The Lord discards the wicked like dross, and because of that, we should love the word of God and his testimonies. We should tremble before him because if he can get rid of them at the snap of a finger, he can do that to any and all who do not fall within his kingdom. So his call to us is to come to him and to find our rest, to find our hope, to find our strength there, realizing that through Jesus Christ, he has overcome the world that he is our great God, and we must rest in him, and that the word of God points us to him each and every day. Let's hear from uh, our Puritan reading today. This one is titled, In the Beauty of Jesus. In your beauty, blessed Lord, we see a fullness of grace, truth, and righteousness. It corresponds exactly to the wants of poor sinners, your blood to cleanse, your grace to comfort, your fullness to supply. In you there is everything we can want, life, light, joy, pardon, mercy, peace, happiness here, glory hereafter. Do I not see you, my King, in your beauty, when I behold you coming with all these for me? So I must cry out with the psalmist, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And that is not all, because when I see the King in his beauty, I see him also in his love. Yes, blessed Lord, you are so beautiful, for you have so loved poor sinners that you gave yourself for them. And we know that our love for you did not come first, but your love for us came first. Your love prompted ours. Your love filled our hearts, and by your Spirit, first prompted our minds to look toward you. That makes you lovely indeed. And now, Lord, Every day's view of you increases that love and brings home your beauty more and more. The more often you stoop to visit my poor soul, the more beautiful you appear. Every appearance, every view, 
Every glimpse of Jesus tends to make my God and King more gracious and lovely to my soul and adds fresh fervor to my love. Come then, you blessed, holy, lovely one, and ravish my spiritual senses, senses with your beauty, that my whole soul would be filled only with the love of Jesus every day. Until that day, when seeing you here below, uh, through your grace, I come to look upon you and live forever in your presence, in the full beams of your glory, in your throne above. Amen. Amen. The Puritans have this perception of being stiff and formal and dry and whatnot. But when you read these readings, these prayers of theirs, they loved the Lord and wanting nothing more than to know him, be known by him, and to draw closer to him. May that be our prayer for this day. Let us pray. Father, may we be known by God. May we know God. May we be loved by you, O God, and lifted up. May we find our strength and our hope in you. As we go through this day, O God, I pray that you would open our eyes to the majesties and wonders around us that you have created, that you have set there for your glory. And I pray, O Lord, that we would glorify you in word, thought, and deed, in all that we do. As parents, may we parent to the glory of God. As students or teachers, may we learn or teach to the glory of God. As employees or employers, may we work to the glory of God. Father, may all we do be done to your glory, that your name would be lifted on high, that all others would see the beauty that we see. Oh Lord, we thank you that we can look upon your face through faith. Father, we look forward to the day when we can look upon your face in reality and see you face to face for all eternity. Oh God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. Be glorified in us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us all of this week. We look forward to joining you again next week when we gather together for some thoughts from the Word.